It's 8 o'clock. This is Sky News Tonight. Our top story. Donald Trump says military plans for North Korea are locked and loaded. The US president continues to talk tough in the confrontation with Pyongyang. But Angela Merkel says there is no military solution. Tonight, we'll be looking at whether the president's rhetoric is aimed at China as much as North Korea. Also tonight. At the risk of collapse, the gas supply at four South London tower blocks is cut off because of cracks in the walls. If you want to see just whether this hole goes all the way through or not, watch this. A book completely gone through the hole. It's now in the other room. Convicted of forced labour, the family who exploited the vulnerable in slave-like conditions. The EU calls a summit to discuss the contaminated egg scandal. And America's men in Havana complain they've been targeted by a sonic attack. A very good evening to you. The U.S. appears ready for conflict, but also isolated from some of its allies over the North Korea crisis. Donald Trump says military plans are locked and loaded if Pyongyang continues to pursue a nuclear weapon. But Angela Merkel today insisted diplomacy was the only way forward. With regard to North Korea and close cooperation between the countries concerned, particularly the, the United States uh, and China, but also South Korea and North Korea and Japan. This uh, kind of cooperation must be intensified in order to avoid a uh, military conflict, but I don't think that escalation of a language is the right approach. Let's go live now to Washington and our U.S. correspondent Cordelia Lynch. And Cordelia, at President Trump ramping up the rhetoric again today. Yes, it's the third time this week that he has said that America is willing to strike if necessary. He would dial it down, give his uh, senior aides a chance to look at strategy behind the scenes without these incendiary tweets perhaps hampering progress. OK, Cordelia, thanks very much. Now, President Trump has said that China could do a lot more to stop its closest ally from pursuing nuclear weapons. Beijing supports North Korea with subsidies, fuel and trade, arguably enabling its missile program. Well, our Asia correspondent Katie Stallard is in the South Korean capital of Seoul and has been looking at what China can do to calm the crisis and whether it's willing to actually do so. During the Korean War, China fought on the side of the North, side his backing down. Katie Stallard, Sky News in Seoul. And of course, that's a story that's likely to feature prominently in tomorrow's papers. We'll be taking a first look at those at 10.30 tonight with Claire Fox from the Institute of Ideas and the editor of politics.co.uk, Ian Dunt. Now, residents of high-rise flats in South London, which are at risk of collapse if there's a gas explosion, have told Sky News that they've been complaining about the building for decades. Council officials say Ledbury Towers in Peckham has a design flaw, which should have been fixed more than 40 years ago. Well, our senior correspondent, David Bowden, has been looking at it. 50 years after these flats were built, they've turned the gas off after... 17 countries are now involved in an egg contamination scandal that originated in Europe and prompted supermarkets to recall hundreds of products. Well, the eggs are thought to contain traces of a pesticide that's bad for use on poultry farms, and it's also potentially harmful to humans. Well, they were found at producers in four countries, Belgium, France, Germany and the Netherlands. Eggs from these producers have now reached 11 EU countries. Uh, that's Austria, Britain, Denmark, Ireland, Italy, Luxembourg, Poland, Romania, Slovenia, Slovakia and Sweden, as well as Switzerland and Hong Kong, which of course are outside the European Union. Well, the EU will hold a summit in September to discuss the situation. Our Europe correspondent Mark Stone has this report now from Brussels. These eggs are safe, it says. At every level here there is an element of damage limitation. Food scandals like this can have a huge impact, not because of the actual danger they pose, but the perception 
and shows a clear failure somewhere in the chain. Mark Stone, Sky News in Brussels. Eleven members of the same family were today convicted of a series of modern slavery offences against vulnerable people, including those with learning difficulties. The Rooney family, who were based on traveller sites in Lincoln, forced their victims to work for little or no pay and controlled them with alcohol, drugs and threats of violence. Louisa Pilbeam has more. They were kept as slaves in these squalid caravans. No running water, no heating, not even a toilet. Those they inflicted on their victims. Louisa Pilbeam, Sky News. The man who killed his younger brother by dousing him in petrol and setting him on fire as he slept was today jailed for life. Blair Logan admitted killing his brother Cameron and trying to kill his brother's girlfriend at their parents' home in Scotland on New Year's Day. He'll serve a minimum of 20 years in prison, as our correspondent, Enda Brady, now reports. This was the aftermath of the blaze on New Year's Day in the quiet Scottish town of Mulgai, his brother's girlfriend. Enda Brady, Sky News. Now we've got a bit of breaking news to bring you now and Kenya's election commission has declared uh, Kenyatta as the winner and of course the defeated opponent uh, has claimed that her, there has been election fraud. Those are live pictures now from Nairobi that you can see on the screen there and like I say Kenyatta has been declared the winner. We'll bring you the very latest on that as and when we get it. You're watching Sky News tonight. Coming up... Now, Al Gore is back 11 years after his award-winning climate change documentary, An Inconvenient Truth, gave us the strongest warning to date of what mankind is doing to the planet. He's now come up, though, with an inconvenient sequel. In Truth to Power, the former U.S. Vice President visits the worst affected areas and also examines President Donald Trump's decision to pull out of the Paris Climate Change Accord. So there's a glimpse of the action. Al Gore is incidentally in London at the moment and has been speaking to Sky's Katie Spencer. Well, I had thought uh, there might be faster progress, but likely one becomes. Katie Spencer speaking to Al Gore there. Now, it's been a beautiful day out there. Let's see if it's set to continue. A tranquil air rests over Doha as the sun shines bright above Miami. Conditions this weekend are looking promising for many with pleasantly warm sunny spells. There would be some scattered showers on Saturday with more in the way of sunshine on Sunday. Ahead of that, it's a cloudy and breezy end of Friday, I'm afraid, with patchy outbreaks of rain and drizzle moving southeastwards across the UK and Ireland. The rain across England and Wales will fizzle out this evening to leave a fairly cloudy and mild night. Showers will persist for parts of Scotland, Northern Ireland, Ireland and, of course, Northern England. The weather, sponsored by Qatar Airways. You're watching Sky News tonight. Coming up, we report on dozens of British sex offenders are being refused entry into Southeast Asia. Welcome back. You're watching Sky News tonight. Our top stories. Residents of high-rise flats in South London, which are at risk of collapse if there's a gas explosion, have told Sky News that they've been complaining about the building for decades. And 11 members of the same family have been convicted of a series of modern slavery offences against vulnerable people, including those with learning difficulties. The US President Donald Trump has warned North Korea that America is locked and loaded if Pyongyang acts unwisely over its nuclear plans. Well, staying with that story now, Donald Trump has repeatedly said that China can do more. Let's speak to one man who agrees. John Bolton is former US ambassador to the UN and former Under Secretary of State of Arms for Control and International Security. He joins us live now from Washington. Very good evening to you. Uh, first of all, is it acceptable for North Korea to have nuclear missiles? Uh, I personally don't believe it is. Uh, I don't think that the American people should be forced from now until infinity, essentially, to live under the threat of this erratic, uh, indeed bizarre regime, uh, or under its capability, not simply through ballistic missiles, but by 
uh, disassembling a weapon, putting it on a tramp steamer, and sailing it into any harbor in the world. I, I think North Korea's possession of the nuclear capability alone is unacceptable. So are you prepared to go to war to prevent them from having these missiles? Well, let's be clear what we're talking about here. No, nobody wants war. But we have tried for 25 years uh, of negotiation, carrots and sticks, as they say at the State Department, to try and persuade North Korea to give up its nuclear weapons program. And 25 years of diplomacy has failed. And we are at risk of this uh, indescribable regime having the power to incinerate hundreds of thousands of Americans. And I find that unacceptable. So I think there are a few diplomatic options left, very few. Uh, but I think you have to look very seriously uh, at the use of military force to eliminate their nuclear weapons capability, because otherwise the whole world is hostage. How many lives are you prepared to lose in order to stop that happening? Uh, you know, that's a loaded question, and it's the wrong question for an American. Uh, the question for an American president is, how do I protect American lives? Uh, I wish we weren't in this situation. Uh, we are because, as I said, there have been 25 years of failure. Uh, I think that you can persuade China, it's still my view, you can persuade China that the real answer here, the diplomatic answer, is to agree to the reunification of the Korean Peninsula, essentially eliminating the North Korean nuclear weapons threat by eliminating North Korea. Now, that's a hard argument to make to China, although I do think it's in their national interest. I wish we had started making that argument 10 or more years ago, but we are where we are today. I think we need to run that argument. But in the meantime, I don't think any American president should accept the risk of an ICBM on a North Korean launch pad headed who knows where with who knows what under the nose cone. But speaking about China, uh, today they said that they would retaliate if the U.S. decided to go to war. So surely that would end up in all-out war. Well, uh, number one, uh, I don't agree with that conclusion. Number two, I think the most significant thing uh, in a statement in a state-owned newspaper, not clear if it's entirely an official government statement, but the most significant thing that that uh, article said was that if North Korea launched an attack on Guam or some other American territory and America retaliated, that China would stand aside. The statement about them getting involved if the United States strikes first uh, is traditional Chinese position. And I think the daylight that they've just now shown that hopefully Kim Jong-un has listened to is a significant development and it gives me hope that a diplomatic initiative to convince China to allow the reunification uh, of the peninsula in the uh, most constructive way possible has a chance to succeed. And President Donald Trump has said today that military plans are locked and loaded. It's very strong language. Does he need to use more diplomacy as Angela Merkel has perhaps suggested today? Yeah, let me try this one more time. Maybe for the third time uh, you'll get it. We've tried for 25 years to use diplomacy. What indication is there? What evidence is there that year 26 will succeed? I submit to you there's no evidence whatever. Diplomacy gives the proliferator more time. Right now it's not clear that North Korea has more than a limited number of ballistic missiles that can hit the United States. A year from now, it could have significantly more. Uh, and that's why the problem of North Korea doesn't get better with time. It gets worse. Uh, and it's a threat not just to the United States, but to everyone else as well. All the technology that it has, it would sell to anybody with hard currency, like Iran, like terrorist groups. This is a global threat. Now, maybe the rest of the world isn't paying adequate attention, uh, but the United States certainly is. Well, allow me to put this to you then, sir. Uh, Donald Trump has used very strong language, as we've spoken about. Is this a warning to China as much as it is uh, to North Korea? It certainly should wake China up. And I know people have criticized the president for the uh, clear language that he used. Consider the historical context. His administration follows one of the weakest, most feckless American administrations in our history. Uh, an administration that drew one red line after another, Syrian chemical weapons is a good example, and did next to nothing. 
So uh, I think we could be forgiven if we're worried that foreign adversaries may not take the word of an American president seriously, and that therefore, as is so often the case in America, plain speaking is a virtue. Okay, John Bolton, thanks very much, as always, for your thoughts there. Uh, as Thank you've been you. hearing, we've been speaking, of course, about Donald Trump, and he has been speaking in the last few moments. Well, I think it's pretty obvious. Uh, we are looking at that very carefully, uh, and uh, I hope that they are going to fully understand the gravity of what I said, of an overt threat, which, by the way, he has been uttering for years, and his family has been uttering for years. Or if he does anything with respect to Guam or any place else that's an American territory or an American ally, he will truly regret it, and he will regret it fast. Okay? Thank you all very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Well, there we go. Those are the latest comments and pictures from Donald Trump in Bedminster speaking about the North Korea crisis at the moment. And he responded to his critics, uh, saying that people are only criticising him because it is him making those comments. He even said that Angela Merkel, Merkel, who said that diplomacy was the key, he described her as a great friend and said perhaps she was speaking on behalf of Germany. So that's the latest there from Donald Trump. Uh, but you are watching Sky News tonight. Plenty more coming up, including the mysterious sonic device reportedly used to target diplomats in Havana. Our summer sale is now on. Welcome back. Now, in Birmingham, an ongoing bin crisis, which has seen mountains of rubbish left rotting on the streets, has become a major public health hazard. Some areas haven't had their bins collected for six weeks, causing misery for residents who are dealing with a massive increase in rats and other pests. Our correspondent Tom Parmenter has the details. The rats are loving this. In just ten minutes here, we saw at least ten. They can go amongst there and eat and drink to the heart's content without being disturbed. So. Now, relations between America and Cuba have been tense for decades, and now a mysterious sonic weapon is straining them even further. U.S. officials say an acoustic device was used to attack U.S. and Canadian diplomats in Havana last year, causing them severe hearing loss. But who did it and why is a complete mystery. Well, our technology correspondent, Tom Cheshire, has this report. Intrigue on the streets of Havana. Buy sonic devices, an ill-disposed president, and you might have the makings of a crisis. Tom Cheshire, Sky News. So was it a sonic weapon, and more importantly, was it Cuban? I'm joined now by Dr Emily Morris, who is Honorary Research Associate at UCL Institute of the Americas. A very good evening to you. A bizarre story, this. Is it actually possible that this happened? No. I think um, the stories are, you know, it's a good story. And there's a great appetite for this kind of story. The relations with the United States and Cuba have obviously been troubled for a very long time. But it's extremely unlikely to the point of not, um, not plausible at all that this would be a weapon. And even the, the US um, officials have said a sonic device um, is suspected. Nobody's talked about a weapon actually, a, a sonic device, meaning that it may have been a side effect of something. Um, and also, it, we've got two different kind of sources here. We've got the official statement, and then we've got the statement which is reported from a US official which, who is supposed to have knowledge of this, and which is not a reliable source, necessarily. So there's something going on. All we know is really that two people, well, not two, we don't know the number, a few people got ill in the US Embassy and the Canadian Embassy that they went back to the US. We know that this was reported to the Cubans in February. And we know that um, there was an attempt at cooperation between the Cuban and the US authorities. And then in May, some um, Cuban uh, diplomats were asked to go home from their embassy in Washington. So just remind us, if you will, why are tensions so straight between the Cubans and the United States? Well, of course, the, the, under Obama, US and Cuba began a process towards normalization. So diplomatic relations were restored in 2015, only in 2015, after a very, very long time, after decades. Um, uh, uh, Trump has said that he would like to 
get a better deal. He says that Obama surrendered effectively to, to Cuba. Um, and so he's made these statements saying that he's going to toughen his line, which may explain the request for the Cuban diplomats to go home because the, the um, Trump administration seemed to be suggesting not that they've actually done something aggressive, but that they failed to um, fulfill their obligations under Geneva Conventions to protect diplomats. So this latest incident mm. could stray tensions even further? Well, yeah, I think that, I mean, they're trying to, the people, I think, within the diplomatic service are trying to smooth over it. The fact that nothing happened when these, this um, happened in May actually suggests that people don't want to make a big fuss. But I think what happened is when it was publicly stated by a US spokesperson that there was a question about the Geneva Convention, the Cubans responded and said, this is, this is slanderous. So that's what's happened. And, and it's, a, it's a reflection of, you know, relations won't be as good under Trump as they were under Obama. The, the cooperation that was going on, of course, the Cubans and the US, surprisingly perhaps to people who are watching it, actually cooperate very closely on security issues um, around the border of Guantanamo, on um, people trafficking, drug trafficking. Um, border controls and, and so on. So actually the security services work very closely together. And these allegations seem very complicated because there's even a suggestion that another country may have been involved. Some allegations of perhaps it being Russia. Yeah, I think, I think this is just speculation. So we have fact and then we have rumour and then we have speculation. And I mean the fact that they say that it's, it's probably not Cuba um, has led some people to say maybe it's Russia. And then they're putting two and two together and making five out of it that the Cuban ambassador or uh, embassy staff in Washington met the Russian embassy staff. I think that really we have to wait to, to find out what actually happened here. OK, Dr. Emily Morris, thanks ever so much for your expertise there. Well, let's take a look at the sport, shall we? Well, it's been a cracking start to the brand new Premier League season tonight. They're just... Two all between Arsenal and Leicester with seven minutes of that second half gone. Tell you more about that at full time. See you then. Thanks very much for that update. Now it's been a beautiful day out there. Let's see if it's set to continue. As a cool evening settles over India, the lights shine bright on a crisp New York night. Conditions this weekend are looking promising, I'm pleased to say, for many with pleasantly warm sunny spells. There'll be some scattered showers on Saturday, with more in the way of sunshine on Sunday. Ahead of that, it's a cloudy and breezy end to Friday, with patchy outbreaks of rain and drizzle moving southeastwards across the UK and Ireland. The rain across England and Wales will fizzle out this evening to leave a fairly cloudy and mild night. Showers will persist for parts of Scotland, Northern Ireland, Ireland and Northern England. After a drizzly start, for South East England, most places will enjoy bright spells and lighter winds on Saturday, but there will be some scattered showers, mainly over central parts. The weather, sponsored by Qatar Airways. Coming up on Sky News at 9, President Trump's military warning to North Korea will have the latest on that. And we've got plenty more, of course, coming up after this break. <laughs>